Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician the Civil War. It's May 1863. I finally have every single patron unit in the game. So I'm going to be posting a video later today that will be a private video just for our patrons that will show you exactly where in the various orders of battle your unit is. Uh, so you should be able to see that and then we'll make sure that you know nothing slipped through the cracks or somebody didn't forget to put in a request. But if I hit like on your post on Patreon, that means I've recruited your unit into the game. So here we go. We're going to see if we can't uh, try and start to make something happen in Virginia, break the stalemate there. But mostly I'm concerned about uh, continuing our movement into Kentucky and drawing him out that way. Uh, now that I've recruited all the patron units, and I do have some available uh, recruits still out there uh, to the tune of about 76,000 volunteers and draftees. Uh, I'm going to start uh, garrisoning all of our various forts, including our newly taken Fort Woodbury, which we're in the process of getting a garrison put into. Uh, Army of the West, uh, looks like they were building another fort when I got there, so that's kind of interesting. Um, Army of the West is making its move toward Cairo. That'll be a huge move for us, and I think that should probably draw some of his armies away from Kentucky and spread things out a little bit, which is what I'm trying to do right now. All right, Jackson is taking Cairo. The Dakota are expelled from Minnesota. There were other things going on besides the Civil War in American history at this time, including uh, some pretty terrible things that were happen happening dealing with Native Americans up in Minnesota. What do we got here? The first corps of his army of the Tennessee against our army of Tennessee. We've got the numbers. Let's see what happens. So this time we have a meeting engagement, which means uh, we're going to be both probably super close to each other when we deploy, and we're all fighting over Nichols' stone wall. You can see Spencer's Bay, Carver's Bay over here. Not a lot of area that we can fight. There's the Hoedown River, and so we're going to move our whole army right into position. This big, nice open space for a battlefield here. Let's just kind of get a look at the ground a little bit. We're going to try to organize right in that area and hopefully he's not too close and we can dig ourselves in right along this stone wall and defend it so we are into our defensive position along wolf creek over here on the right and then the union's coming right down the center as i expected he would let's get our division commander moved out of the way a little bit so here's the situation from right to left we've got uh, john scott with scott's brigade i think that's a reinforcement unit that's not going to continue to exist uh 153rd gordon brigade 152nd c fourth brigade 154th argyle brigade over here on the right we got the 51st artillery uh, brigade right there with their 12 pounder howitzers we need to get those upgraded we've got better weapons available now uh, over here in the center then we've got the first tennessee infantry london volunteers gruber's guards all behind a stone wall good cover Flemish Lions right here. Uh, we've got the Galveston Greenbacks in reserve. This is their first combat. We'll get that unit reinforced. They've only got 1,400 men right now. And then right here we've got, let's see, uh, High Pressure Brigade, Mississippi 7th, Rebel Sons of Aaron in reserve, 10th Tennessee Irish, and there are Double Tree Widows, Queen's Own Hussars, and First Cherokee Mounted Rifles all out on the flank. Let's see what he does. Our artillery is all opened up. Looks like he's going to head toward my right, which is not how I would want that to go, but it makes total sense if you're the enemy that that's what you would do. So in this case, what makes sense for us is to collapse the flank. And let's send, I'm going to send the cav up this direction. He may have more men out there, so I don't want to get too crazy and coming after his flank. He's coming straight at the Argyle Brigade. London volunteers are going to open up on his cavalry.
Alright, there's more coming. I expected there might be. I'm actually going to send Standawadi a little bit further out. I'm going to try to get at that battery. Alright, Double Tree Widows are going to dismount. They're going to engage these guys in this orchard here. Alright, so far so good. Let's deal with this battery. We've got mount mounted units here with him having no protection. He's trying to pull him out now. Alright, Queen's own Hussars are gonna engage these guys here. Man, this is going to be a lot of firing going on here. How are the numbers looking so far? Alright, so far so good. About 2 to 1 casualties. Helps that I'm in a uh, really strong defensive position. Argyle Brigade's lost 326. Seaforth have lost 200. Got back now that he did his job with the battery. London Volunteers. Gruber's guards haven't lost a man, but they're still putting some good fire on the first cavalry. He's lost more than half his number. I can't believe he hasn't broken yet. Uh, Wadi just broke trying to hit that battery. Bring the double tree widows up over here. Let's see if they can get some fire on Rodman. We do have a number of units in reserve. We just drove McCook back. Let's go ahead and bring these other units up. How are we doing here, Parsons? Highland Division have lost a thousand men. But Magruder's boys are hanging in there pretty good against significant numbers. Actually, we could we could shift Buford here and we could start putting some fire on his flank. Oh, we gotta watch Stoneman though. Let's bring Walker up the Gruber's guards. Man, there's fire all the way along the line here right now. I want to pause for a second. So just looking at some of the numbers, we do have him outnumbered by about 8,000 men. We've taken out 30 of his guns, so that has made the artillery number a little more even. Um, casualties, about 2,500 for us, about 4,100 for him. Uh, looking at the combat report, just to see who's inflicting the casualties. And right now, it's the Highland Division by far, but they're right at the center of this whole thing. Zollicoffer's division also inflicting a decent amount of casualties. All right, let's continue and see what happens. So Magruder's Highlanders right here. They're doing most of the fighting. I'm trying to bring up help, but he's got help on the way too, so... Let's send the Rebel Sons of Aaron up here to help out. I'm going to hold these guys back. Gladden's come in. He's going to be able to start getting some fire on Stoneman. I'm worried about the Argyles. They've lost 800 men. All right. C4th Brigade's lost 1,000, but they do have a perk now. I'm looking at Iron Discipline for them. Send as much help as we can. I want to get all kinds of fire on these guys. Start causing some of them to break before it's too late. 
Thankfully, Buford's in there wreaking havoc on his right. His first brigade's lost 1,700 men. I can't believe they're still standing. Usually, you get over 50% casualties, you see them break pretty quick. Seahorse Brigade's probably not even going to make it that far before they break. There goes McReynolds. That's just ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah, we know Clayton Sr. is losing men like crazy. Alright, let's bring Bragg up. Who just engaged Bragg? Come on, Bonham, get closer. Got two brigades on top of each other. Let's try to fix that. There goes McReynolds. There goes Clayton. So that's a broken unit on each side. He's just really loading up on this side, so I'm concerned about the ability to hold. There they go. I think we got them. They're pulling back. Beautiful. Man, that's some. If we if we can inflict a few more casualties, we can probably drive this up to a major victory. Morgan's nervous. I wonder if he can still run down this battery. We need uh, twenty six percent, no twenty seven percent casualties for the enemy to make it a major victory, and he's at almost twenty five right now. I think we can get it there. 25. Ah, Morgan just broke after hitting that artillery. Eh, maybe we're not going to be able to do it. Let's try to pursue a little bit. I'd love to drive up his casualties just a hair. Another 2%. Well, we did it. We pursued him. And we drove up those casualty numbers to 30%. 9,500 of his 3,100 men are casualties. We just lost 5,200 men. Now, granted, he can replace these losses better than I can. But every time we win a victory like that, we drive his morale down. We increase our experience numbers. We're going to start getting more and more elite units. Uh, which, even though we'll always have a small army, eventually, if we keep them reinforced, we'll, we'll end up with elite forces. So that battle took place here in central, kind of south central Kentucky. And this is gonna allow us now to take over the forts and the supply depots that were being built here. Or is that, actually that was us that was building those. He attacked us. So that allows us to defend this area and complete the building of those projects. In the meantime, we have taken Cairo. That's another spot that we're going to use for supply, but also we're going to build a fort so we can hang on to it. All right, he sent another army down here to try and take Richmond. He's got a first corps with 24,000 men, the Army of New England, second corps sitting there, so we're going to have to send help. Army of the Kanawha is in no position to do any help right now, but that's who I would need to send have anybody else. Army of East Tennessee is trying to refit as well, so they're in no position to do anything. Okay, disaster at Fort Herbert. Bartow surrendo, surrenders. Uh, that's one of our forts around Richmond, so he may very well take Richmond. That's a problem. and I can't disengage from this ongoing siege. It's been going on for months in Fredericksburg, and it's completely pinned my army from being able to do anything. The only way I can do anything about this would actually be to give a retreat order to this army and I really don't want to do that but I just don't know if I have a choice if I want to be able to get this army in the field again so things are not going particularly well in Virginia right now I'm just really overloaded by his numbers here comes the first corps of the Army of the Tennessee. He's going to hit the Army of Tennessee. So we're going to be seeing a lot of combat 
here in central Kentucky. I guess he doesn't like the fact that I'm here. He does have an, uh, his second corps coming back from the Army of the Ohio. He's got a, a first corps coming from the Army of Occupation. So he's definitely sending more men this way uh, to try and overwhelm Beauregard's elite Army of Tennessee. I don't really have anybody I can send to help him, so we're about to get... Well, that's not too bad, actually. I don't know why our morale's so bad, but I've got 37,000 men and 50 guns. I think we can handle this. Looks like we're going to be fighting at Bowling Green one more time. Okay, so I like where we're able to deploy this time. The objective is right here at a river crossing. So the chances are, as he's coming over from this way, he's going to probably either come to, right down this road, maybe cross here, or he's going to come around here to come at it. Either way, we've got some really solid defensive choices that we can make. Uh, and I think we should be in really good shape here. I just I don't want to put the Highland Division at the brunt of this thing again. Uh, so we're going to put, I think, Zollicoffer right in over here. Actually, we could put him in right behind this fence right here. That would be a perfect place to defend. Uh, we'll throw some help over there just in case, and then we'll cover these crossings, and I think we'll be in good shape. All right, so here's the... Uh, the layout. We're going to hold uh, Zollicoffer's division over here on this side with some cavalry on his right and some artillery. I'm going to put the Highland division right in the middle. That way, once we see which way he comes from, they can reinforce either way. Uh, and then we've got these uh, river crossings covered as best we can. I think he's got to come from one of those spots. Okay, he's coming down this side, it appears. So let's go ahead and get prepared for that. High pressure brigade. Gonna be right at the brunt of this thing. I've got a rail bridge forward right here. Well, these guys, all oh, the this is a a reinforcement unit that's not even supposed to be there. So they've got mixed muskets. They don't have real weapons. Um, we'll hold Gladden back, but we'll eventually throw him in there. But let's see, Magruder. Once we know for sure that his whole army is going to come down here, we can start crossing over here and we can hit his flank. Uh, let's pull Magruder over into a place where he can be a reinforcement as well. And we'll watch. It's, it's certainly still possible he could turn and come this way. So let's... Let's do this. Let's pull Robertson's skirmishers in. Robertson's like my smallest unit. That might not be the best one for the job right there. Oh, end of the day. So we're going to have a chance to redeploy anyway. So I just got notification. His second core arrived overnight. So we're pretty much even now in terms of numbers. Uh, so I still may want to hold these guys here to defend just in case... His second corps comes down this way and decides to go over here. Uh, but we've got 30 engineering points. So I'm going to pull everybody out of the way here just so I can see what I'm dealing with. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build some fortifications right in here along this river. Okay, we've got our defenses. Let's see what he does. We've got fortifications over here. I've got more over here, reinforced a little bit, and I think we're in pretty good shape. Now we just wait, because he has to attack. I think I've got everything covered pretty well. We've got a nice second layer of defense here, plenty of artillery. Not as much of a second layer over here, but this is just mainly a safeguard in case he decides to show up this way. I'm going to pull my skirmishers back in from all of these units. First engagement with some of his skirmishers that have come up to uh, trade some shots with the Flemish Lions. The Flemish Lions are super close to getting their perk. Hopefully we can start getting some of these perks almost two years into the war. I think maybe we need some better leaders to do training because I can't believe I don't have more units that have perks at this point in the war. 
7.30 in the morning. He's still getting his men into position. He's loading up everybody in here. So if he does decide to attack here, we may have an opportunity to move in and maybe hit his flank. Pretty even casualties right now. He's got a significant advantage in morale. About a 14 point advantage. So now at 8 o'clock he's moving artillery forward. So let's, let's go ahead and make sure that we're doing counter battery fire as much as humanly possible. Looks like I only have one battery that's in range at the moment, and that's Brian over here with his 12-pound Napoleons. So we'll try to hit those guys as best we can. Probably not a lot I can do about it right now, though. All right, here he comes. He's going to lead with the cavalry. Let's see how the rebel sons of Aaron hold up. Dismounted cavalry trying to cross the bridge. Here's the problem. I, I gotta try to avoid this happening. I guess they're still showing as being in the parapet, so I guess we're okay for now with the high pressure brigade with their mini 1851s, although they don't appear to have much of a, a view of the enemy at the moment. I'm gonna get them to turn back. take any initiative dude just stay facing forward please he's coming at us at both crossings at the same time all right how are we doing so far oh yeah inflicting good casualties we just gotta worry about the numbers he's throwing at me because he's coming at me with everything and he's bringing up the artillery too. All right, I want to switch the artillery back to fire at will because I want to be hitting these guys that are trying to cross. So far, so good. Casualties are minimal. The Flemish lions should get that perk any minute now. Make sure nobody else is coming anywhere else that I can see. And it doesn't appear. He's he's doing all or nothing coming after this objective. All right, there's the perk. Let's do marksman. Anytime they engage at long range, they're gonna level that up. Man, it's a lot of men. But good, good, good so far. 10th Tennessee Irish seeing a few more casualties, but that's okay. Second Brigade's going to try to hit me with a melee attack. Let's make sure we've got plenty of manpower up close. So we can come in and reinforce if needed. Oh, did he just lose a man surrendered? Yes. They disintegrated in that attack. First, our 154th Argyle Brigades got there. I'm gonna give them deadly volley. Braxton Bragg's Gordon Brigades almost got it too. All right, this is beautiful. This could not be going better. We're on our way to pulling a Fredericksburg here. He's got 3,700 casualties and my 400. I'm just gonna sit tight. I'm not gonna try to be aggressive here. Bunch of units about to hit their perks. Man, I can't wait to see the numbers on this as far as casualties taken versus what they've inflicted. Right now, none of my units have more than 112 losses. Man, this is brutal. This is worse than Fredericksburg for the Union. The combination of a river crossing with reinforced parapets right now, deadly. Absolutely deadly. All 
Alright, there he goes. He's starting to uh, pull folks back now. Let's do this. Let's mount up our calf and send them across the river. We're going to see if we can't catch this battery as he's pulling pulling them over. How are we doing here, Buckner? 527 casualties. That's it. Used about a third of their ammunition already. Give them deadly volley. Give Stovall. I like deadly volley and sharpshooters. It gives me a lot of uh, leveling up from shooting. Works out nicely. I think we got him. That's it. Run away. Alright, I think we lost our chance of going after that battery now. I'm going to pull, pull him back across. Yeah, he's out. We got him. 8,000 to 800. 10 to 1 casualties. Alright, let's see the specifics here because I'm really curious to know what kind of numbers we inflicted. Look at that. 2% to 24%. But I want to look at the combat report because I want to see, look at that, 750 inflicted casualties to me inflicting 6,000 or more. Buckner's division inflicted almost all of those. Flemish Lions inflicted 2,200 casualties. 2,200. The others did equally as well. High Pressure inflicted 1,200. Rebel Sons of Aaron inflicted 1,200. 10th Tennessee Irish inflicted 900. Man, that's amazing. That is beautiful. Well done, boys. All right, we're printing new notes. So let's go ahead back to our policies now, see what else we have available to us. We do print notes too. I don't think that's really where I want to go right now. Um, not really any good options here. I can't do the Slavery Restriction Act, which I would really like to do, um, just because we don't have that as an option. I think we... Um, had to have chosen a different path at the beginning in order to be able to get there. Um, there's not really any other good options at the moment. Blockade Runner, I guess, is where we go next. Okay, we've got ourselves a big one this time. And it's uh, elements of his Army of the Tennessee. Huge elements of his Army of the Tennessee. Ah... Uh, we're looking at 100,000 men and 246 guns going up against about 85,000 men and only 101 guns. Uh, and, unfortunately, us not even having our men on the field for the first four hours and only eight hours before we get everybody. So, uh, I feel like I have to fight this and I've got to try and find a way to win. Looks like we're going to be pulling a reverse Fredericksburg here. We're going to be defending Fredericksburg, but defending it from the opposite side as what happened historically. And uh, he's going to be coming down at us from the south and from the west. That's kind of interesting. So we've got to try and figure out where we can dig in. Uh, seems like digging in along Maurice Heights is probably the way to go. Um, going to try to dig, uh, make, oh, I've got, is that 104 engineering points? That's fantastic. Oh, that's huge. That's going to help a lot. So we'll dig in along Marie's Heights right here, facing that way. Uh, and then we'll dig in right on this side here, maybe along this railroad. And we'll just hope for the best. Although part of me almost wants to dig in right here, a smaller area, and just let him hurl himself at me. Maybe use the canal and the water, like Hazel Run, as a defense. I don't know. Let me see what I'm able to... It just depends on where I'm able to put the fortifications, really. Okay, so it only took about 20 of my fortification points, uh, or my engineering points, to do that much. Uh, so now we get to upgrade it. And you can see what that does. That uh, spends more of the points. But it adds, in this case, it adds kind of a reinforcement to it. And then you can actually go another level with those fortifications on top of that. I think I'll start with this side for that. Let them get kind of tangled in as they try to get at me. All right. 
I don't know if we, oh, there is another la layer to that on, on top of it. All right, perfect. We're going to upgrade these things as high as they'll go. I think that's just about all we can do. All right, and then we'll throw the army in there and we'll see what happens. He does have, there is another objective back here, and I guess it's always possible he could sneak around and go for that. But I'm going to take my chances that he doesn't. So I don't quite have enough to cover it all uh, and have a reserve. So uh, everybody's here. Everybody's on the line. Hopefully we've got some time for stability because uh, a lot of these guys right now are pretty weak morale-wise. So hopefully we'll have time for them to stabilize before the enemy gets here. And then hopefully when my reinforcements arrive, uh, I'll be able to layer up on some of these defenses and, and get myself some... Reserves. A lot of these guys are not showing as in the fortifications, which is a little frustrating. Hopefully, we'll get them in there. Well, this is absolutely unbelievable, but he is coming at one spot that I left undefended, thinking, okay, he's not going to come that way. And that's exactly the way he's coming. He's sending his whole army at this crossing right here where I have absolutely nobody defending. Oh, boy. What a mess. We're going to try to pull some units over here to slow him down as best I can. Not what I was expecting at all. That's a problem, big time. Especially being outnumbered. It might be a really quick battle if that's the case. All right, Stuart, get over there. Oh, Tyler's already getting across and in behind me. going to keep shifting as best we can here. Get the Hell Riders over here. Hopefully we can drive him off real quick so we can build a defense right along here. Oh, man. Wasn't expecting that at all. All right, Royal Irish. Oh, they've already lost 200 men. This is not going to go well. Come on, Hellriders. Get up there next to them. good so far. Not good. I still gotta watch because he's got men all over the place and most of them aren't right here. Oh, look at Tyler coming in at me. Charging. Alright, Hell Riders. You do the same. Hit him. They broke right away. Darn it. Alright, we broke Tyler. Now let's shift uh, Dabney Mari's brigade over here to try and cover this crossing. And the 
hell riders look like they're gonna hang on so we're gonna dismount them again and they can cover right here is he gonna try to take artillery out and around and get them up on Stafford Heights that'd be something they're just out of range All right, here he comes from the other sides now. They're closing in everywhere. Thankfully, we were ready for that. Let's get these guns over here, Kempers, Blakely's. Longstreet arrives. Excellent news. Excellent, excellent news. Not a moment too soon. Sexy division is going to be first. We're going to bring them right up here. Still waiting for a lot of these guys to even arrive. All right, we're going to send Anderson right up in behind these guys. No, not that way. Oh, there's no way to cross over here, is there? Yeah, we can cross. No, oh, maybe not. Well, if we have to cross that way, we do. In the meantime, Hanging on for dear life. Wow. Assault all the way along the line. Come on, Longstreet. Get him there. All right, Sibley. Oh, that's the only way to cross. Okay, we have to go that way. I'm going to tell Longstreet just to bring the whole first core right up here for now, and then we'll figure it out. My goodness. He's throwing everything at me right now. I feel like for some reason when we upgrade the fortifications to include these extra things out front... It removes the, the cover of the fortifications, like it never shows me in cover when I do that. So maybe we just don't upgrade them to that point. Fighting conks are doing the best they can right now. New York Copperheads. Give me dead, deadly volley. Okay, we got Kemper's guns up there now. My goodness. Maury's only going to be able to hang on for so long against this. The problem is once that happens, it may all roll back on that side. Yeah, sexy division, I need you across there as quickly as possible. Hopefully, we don't collapse on the right before that happens. Who was killed? Dorsey Pender, commander of the Tar Heel Legion, has fallen. Right here in the center. Historically, he was killed in uh, 1863 in the summer during the Gettysburg Campaign. guys are making an incredible stand, the fighting conks. They're holding off basically more than an entire division, plus a, just a ton of artillery over here. 
New York Copperheads are also doing really well. Right, looks like the Hellriders have been restored a little bit. Come on, Longstreet, get your people there. Also, it would probably be helpful if I didn't have my core commander right there at the center of the line. So let's pull him out of there. My goodness. Come on, boys. I wonder if Sibley can fire on these guys from right there. I bet he can. Hellriders dismount. Give me some fire on these guys. Wow. This is crazy on this side. I know they're taking casualties. Pender's losing a lot of men. See, that's the thing. I shouldn't be losing that many men behind these kinds of fortifications. But for some reason, upgrading the fortifications to that level actually backfires. I don't know why that is. But you saw how few casualties I took in the last battle with less fortifications. But these ones don't seem to work. I inflicted 8,000 casualties. It's just taken too long for Longstreet's men to get there. Man, what these guys have done, they're about to break, but what they have done is incredible. They've, they've slowed down an entire division by themselves. And there they go. Just in time for a reserve brigade to arrive to help out maybe Royal Irish. Meanwhile over here, we're Valley Brigade. Some more of our foreign legions over here doing pretty well. We should never have taken 7,000 casualties being behind these defenses like we are. Come on, McCulloch, get him across. Same with Anderson. I'm gonna put Anderson right up here along the river. And some ammo issues now. It's June, so we have a few more hours yet. But hopefully, we're going to hang on enough to where we can actually redeploy a little bit. Oh, there goes Stuart. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna poke a hole right in the middle of my line.
taking me forever to get these guys across. Here's Hood. And I see the only way to cross is over here. Or so it seems. Oh my gosh, this is just insanity. Virginia Legion's gonna engage his artillery. to get their perk. Oh, I desperately need... Archer was wounded, commanding the Armagh Irish. I desperately need this day to end so we can redeploy. Get those guns. Take them out. We can't stand here and get fired on by that battery. Despite everything that's happened, it is shifting in our direction. Could have been so much better if I would have had better defenses, if I could have been in behind these fortifications instead of them being, being basically worthless. We inflicted 17,000 casualties, but we've lost 12,000. Oh, this battery should not be way up there. Get out of there, all these hurricanes. Yeah, they're done. They got wiped out in a hurry. Okay, so... We hit the end of the day. Uh, we're going to be able to redeploy, but holy cow, this has been an absolute nightmare of a battle. Uh, and there's, It's going to take a while to kind of just figure out what all has even happened here. Uh, but the end result is that we are going to probably pull off a victory, but not without losing 18,000 men and having inflicted 20,000 casualties. Um, this is like a Gettysburg level event here as far as the numbers engaged and also the the percentages of losses. Uh, so the main thing I've got to do right now is I've got to try and pull my army back and figure out what I've got left. Try to organize a defense, maybe along this river. Because we're at the point now where forget the objectives. Let's just save the army and see what we've got left. You can see how little of the second corps is even left to be able to fight. He's lost 16,000 men. He's only got 26,000 left. Second Corps has lost just horrendous casualties compared to uh, Longstreet, who's only lost 2,700. In fact, I'm just going to pull. I'm going to pull Johnston's Corps back off the line completely, and just let Longstreet kind of hold the line here a little bit. Who are these guys here, and why are they back there? There we go. My goodness, that was crazy. All right, let's play this out now. And hopefully he's going to just decide the battle is lost and give up the field. Okay, he's retreating. I was trying to get men across to try and go grab these guns. I don't know if it matters or not, but I'd sure like to have them if at all possible. But we, I don't know how. And it's going to be a disaster trying to rebuild this army after that. But we won. We won a crazy battle. And the, th the funny thing is that the closest thing we've had to Gettysburg in terms of the, the casualty numbers happens within a few weeks of when the historic battle of Gettysburg took place. So what I want to see now is I, I want to just take a look at some of the numbers here and what happened. So in terms of the numbers involved, eh, it looks like it's all messed up somehow. The Army of the Cumberland's showing on my side, so I guess we're not going to be able to look at the numbers. We'll look at the Army afterwards and see where things stand. Okay, as we wrap this episode up, let's look at the Army of Northern Virginia. He's down to just 71,000 men. He's got 15,000 wounded and sick right now. Um, and actually, we're going to, I think... Yeah, I think it's a good time to give him a promotion to full general. Look at those numbers. They're really good. Um, and we probably should take some time to kind of review our commanders and see who might need replaced, promoted, things like that. Johnston's looking really good there, um, except for initiative. Longstreet is actually defamed at the moment, which may be hurting us some. 
Um, but otherwise the numbers look good. I'm actually going to give him a promotion. That actually gave him a little more fame. But, uh, all right. So let's look at numbers for a minute. Uh, 2,200 men, 20, actually Longstreet we know is in pretty good shape. Um, I've created these place replacement depot units and what they are is um, those are where I'm just recruiting fresh units that I will use to when as soon as they arrive on the field I'll just use them to feed into the existing units so that they can get built back up to their full strength. You can see like right here DH Hills Brigade is down to just a thousand effectives at the moment. Those are the kinds of things I want to be able to build back up. Yule's only got 700. Dorsey Pender was killed, so we've got to replace him. Well, there's not a lot of available options right now, are there? Gabriel Reigns. Ooh, he's actually a really good general. Let's promote him. Yeah, it's not letting me. I want to promote him to Brigadier General. There we go. So those are the kinds of things that I'm trying to figure out right now. Uh, Archer's wounded, but hopefully we won't be in battle again anytime soon and he'll have a chance to recover. Yeah, a lot of these units are really in bad shape. Some of them have very few guns left. Battle River Rebels only have one gun. So this is a good example here of where I can... I'll take some of these other units and just combine them. These ones that aren't actual patron units. Uh, and build up units like the Battle River Rebels back up again. And then these units, when they come in, they'll do the same. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and record that Patreon video so you guys can see exactly where all of your units are. And then we'll see the rest of you again very soon. Thanks for watching.